I am recording this video whilst traveling because I haven't really had time to upload an update. Um, but you've seen the first video where Amy's car went wrong, the EMV 200 battery failure. Then you saw a subsequent video I did, probably, talking about the comment section, etc. in that. And this is the conclusion, really, of the issue. So I've filmed some of it on some meta glasses or whatever it is, but the video will be that way around. But then it was the only way of doing it hands-free, so on the day when I picked it up. So just bear that in mind. I'll put some of those clips in from when I picked up the vehicle. So I got it fixed by a lovely chap called Ed. Thank you very much. DIYer would probably be your category. It's not done as a professional thing. Uh, the job costs five grand for a 40 kilowatt hour battery instead of a 24. So upgraded to Amy's car to a 40 kilowatt hour. I'll go on to that in a minute of the difference that makes um, in, in real life, as it were. But that 5K also included draining down the HVAC system um, and then refilling it again. So you're talking it's a couple hundred quid just over 250 off that. So say 4,700-ish to uh, for the replacement of the battery, uh, including as well, I forgot the name now, it's completely gone in my head, but it stops the gasometer, the GOM, from dancing all over the place because it doesn't understand that it's a 40, not a 24 when it tries to guess the remaining mileage. That was also done within that. So to all intents and purposes, Amy's ENV 200 now, you just get in it, it is a normal car, again, you would never really know it's been done, except from of the increased mileage. The increased mileage is, is exceptional, really. And the what it tends to come up with is about 130-ish, 135 on a full charge. So from that point of view, we've gone from, well, terrible, let's forget the fact that it failed and it was doing next to nothing, 25, 30 miles. Forget that completely. It was doing, when it was brand new, about 65, push 70 if you went very slow. Now it's doing 130, no problem. Um, the benefit of that, of course, is if you go out and about, we never used to do long journeys because it's quite restrictive from that point of view, too much hassle, really. You could charge on the motorway, it's not, from that point of view, you can charge, you know, there's places to charge now. There wasn't when we first got EVs. But really, if the range is 60, you're gonna be looking for a charging station at 50. So you can only ever do 50 miles before you have to charge. Whereas with this, you, you're doing 100 miles before you have to charge. So the, the difference is massive and it's just changed that vehicle no end. Brilliant, absolutely spot on. Ed did a brilliant job, real quick turnaround, very professional, just done, dusted, drove it back, no issues at all, absolutely brilliant. You just plug in, charge. Um, yeah, so from that point of view, all those problems are solved. A quick insight into that battery failure. Too many of the modules had, had failed, essentially. Over a period of time, there was obviously a fault with one or two, and it's this is the best guess that they've got. Uh, spoke to Cleveley. Cleveley quoted for the battery, so it would be the lowest price they could do for a 40 kilowatt hour battery. Swapped out, working again, like the standard we got now, where the guessometer's all good. Um, eight and a half thousand pounds to have that done. They could swap it out for a 24 kilowatt hour, so the same battery, similar age, but with no real faults, just with 78% state of health. So it would be in reduced range, but that was the cheapest option. So that was around about two and a half K to get that done uh, and fitted. Uh, no warranty or anything like that. So the choice before me of scrapping the vehicle or selling it off for cheap because of its state um, replacing with a 24 kilowatt hour for around about two, three grand of a similar nature in terms of state of health, but working, not faulty. Swap out through a garage, eight and a half grand, and Ed popped up at 5K, as I say, the actual battery, etc. and swap was subtly cheaper, about 4,700. So, yes, from that point of view, that was my options. There was no way really of economically repairing it. It would have been a lot of a better choice to swap out for a similar age battery that was not faulty. It wasn't one or two modules. So it was a huge amount of modules. 
that had failed. They reckon over half of the modules had failed. So that was Cleveland um, in Cheltenham. So they, that was kind of the options laid before me. So I'll just post up some of the videos from the day when I picked it up. Has it improved drastically? Yes, it has. We're over the moon with it. Absolutely brilliant. Um, so from that point of view, that's where we're at. I'll put some videos on that other day. As they remember, they're going to have black either side or whatever I do in edit. But it's a video that's, yeah, it is what it is, filmed on the day. So, um, yes, any other questions, etc., let me know in the comments. But her car is back on the road, sorted. We've been using it for the last three, four weeks, something like that. It's how much time's passed. And it's fabulous. One downside now, if you want to look at it that way, we charge our cars off peak so 12.30 to 4.30 is our off-peak time. The one I'm sat in now has 6.6 .6 kilowatt hour, 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger on board. So I can charge the whole vehicle from flat in that four hour window. But Amy's has only got the 3.3, which was fine when it was 24. Now it's 40 at 3.3, of course, from 10% to zero. You cannot charge it over the cheap window which actually, in hindsight, might be a slightly good thing. So it will charge from 12.30 to 4.30, about approximately when we're coming back a lot of the time from our daily use, it's about 80, gets to about 80%, which is probably a sweet spot for it to be on. And probably about every five of those charges, she's coming back with a higher amount and it gets to 100. So what we're actually seeing is a, is a cycle of 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, and then 100%. So it's probably gonna be kinder on the battery anyway possibly um so that's the only thing so really i now need to upgrade it to a 6.6 .6 onboard charger not talking about the chatamo you can get 50 from that we're talking about a home charging so ed has got a charger so it might be that i can just do that as well get that bolted on it's probably worth it you can get the cheapest power possible in that four hour window if we could cram it all in there in that four hour window that would be ideal um so that is the only, so the, the, the knock-on effect, I suppose. So there we go, it's all good. I'll just play the footage from what I've got and I'll catch you guys later. It is 6.30 in the morning and I'm headed out today to go and pick up Amy's EMV 200. I'm traveling in my EMV 200 to my parents' place because they've kindly given me a lift up to go and pick it up because it's a hundred miles away I should then be dropped off and hopefully drive back in an EMV 200 that does twice the range it did before so circa 120 miles or something like that it should be able to do so we shall see um, yeah we'll see how it goes so here she is almost ready to go so just a few bits need putting back but basically now turn it on and you'll see at 64 percent we've got 75 miles um it's showing which is mental because we haven't seen 75 miles for a long time at full so quite looking forward to getting this charged up to 100 and seeing what she does 110 we reckon rather than the 65-ish we've been working with for the last, I don't know, two, three years. Well, here I am driving along. First drive in the 40 kilowatt hour ENV 200. So fixed as far as we know now. So another battery in it. I say new, but second hand, obviously, from a DPD van that had a rear end shunt. Um, yeah, so we're at 56%, 63 miles. This will need to settle in because most likely it's the reading the stats from when it was last driven by a DPD driver. Um, so we'll see what happens. I'm going to head to got well, a 114 mile journey, which in the 24 kilowatt hour would have been a bit meh, no thank you, because you have to charge sort of every 50 miles. You need to be looking for a charge about every 50 for risk of fear of running out. Um, with this, that should change that, should, we hope. So I'll get to the rapid, should only need one rapid, hopefully. One thing to note, that is the mileage with the heating on. If I turn it on, it jumps back up to 69. So if I turn the heating off, 69, turn it on, 63, in terms of range. 
but I want the heating on. Oh, yeah, I don't want it on 21. Let me turn it back down. That would be too hot for me. Okay, I've arrived at my first charger. Hopefully my last charger. Um, 24%, 32 miles. Let's see if it charges up. Let's also see if this works well. Uh, look, it's all tangled up. Let's plug this in. Let's try that. Authorising payment. Let's have a look. Charge authorization successful. Okay, it should start charging now, shouldn't it? There we go. She's charging. Let's see what it says on the screen. 24%, 79 pence per kilowatt hour. Oh my goodness me. So where we are at the moment, in the old days, 33% would have been a disaster with, but now we have 45 miles left. But whilst we're here, to ignore that feather, that's one of the children. <laughs> Let's have a look. Let's see if we go here. You can have a look at the battery capacity. Now all those bars are full up again. Whereas if you may have seen the previous videos, they dropped three down, I think, two down, something like that. Um, so that's back up to normal as well. Uh, what else can we say about this? Not a lot, really. 31% um, now. Let's have a look what it said about estimated... Estimated to 100% charge time. Estimated time. That's helpful, isn't it? Dot, 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 dot. Um, but here you go. You've got the charge dates here, look. And you've got the percentage. So we're 44 miles. I need 60 miles. Well, 60 miles back home. Um, around 32%. So, you know, charging up to, theoretically, up to 50% would be enough. But I'm just going to let this charge up to 80, something like that. Um, and just see how I go. This is with the heating off. If I put the heating on, of course, it would drop one mile. But there we go. Um, all right, I desperately need the loo, so I'm gonna go. And there it is, our new car. <clears throat> well, a car that used to do hardly any miles, even when new, 70, 65, 70, should now have doubled the range. So, magic moment here, 99 miles on the old expected range. Let's see what happens. It'll be the first time ever double digits. Woohoo! 100 miles at 75%. So again, we the most I think we got was around the 70, 75 mark when it was new, this car. Um, so we're at 75. I mean, we probably don't think we were getting that i think in real life the range was it so it, was, it would display it but i think about 65 70 is where we're at now we are in three digits at 75 percent. so that's looking pretty good so it is about it's gonna be what 115 120 miles worth of range when we're used to max of 65 and we've been driving around at about 55 60 over the last year as the battery dropped off so it is looking very positive so far. So with this battery updated, it's opened up a whole host of journeys that we wouldn't usually do, that we've made a decision not to do based on the fact that the range is so short. Because one of the issues that is often not looked at, especially for those that haven't owned an EV or one that does lower mileage, so this is the old generation really, it's the original, you know, the 24 kilowatt hour is sort of the original one. And, um, yeah, it has a range of 65 miles, but obviously you're not going to arrive at a charger at zero because unless you're incredibly precise or stupid or brave, maybe, um, you know, you're going to be wanting to quit out at about 20 miles of range left. So that leaves you really every 50 most you need to be finding a charger. So this just opens up the whole thing now. You know, you can do double. Basically, you can do double if it, if it displays 150, 120, that's cool. So we can do twice the length of journey without having to worry about charges. So it's looking very good. It's saying 102 now at 77%. So anyway, I'll do an update again once I'm back to see how this final 60 miles goes and what it looks like. Also, the other good thing is 
at 80%, the whole charging drops off significantly in terms of how much power it's putting in. So having a decent chunk of mileage that you can actually do whilst on a sub 80% on a rapid is very, very good. So yeah, that's another bonus. Whereas an 80% with a 24 kilowatt hour course is not a lot of miles. An 80% with a 40 kilowatt hour is a lot of miles for what we're used to. So yeah, sweet. I'm gonna go and power it off now. Um, and see what happens. And I'll also report back on what the charge is because what's actually happened, you probably can't see on there, but it says preparing to charge on there. Um, a bank's already told me I've been charged a quid by GridServe. So I'm just wondering, this whole charge could cost me a pound, but shall I be so fortunate? We'll find out. And no, it's so scratched up you can't see it, but 14 pounds, 16. Total rip off. And I would never usually do that. I just wanted to run up to about 80% and see how I got on. I would never ever do that. So 99% of our charging is done at home, off peak. Oh, that's not very good, that's all fractured. Um, off peak or solar, so totally free, apart from capital outlay. But there we go, let's get going. Amy is gonna absolutely love this car. Absolutely love it. 104 miles, 78% on it. It's just gonna be able to do <laughs> so many more journeys without charging during a day um, and capture some of that lovely sun you see up there. So the good thing with having a bigger battery is we can try and time it all to, during summer periods, to I always have an overage of solar in summer basically. And it'll be good to be able to capture more of that sun and plonk more of it into the car during peak times for that free free charge, essentially. So, 104 on there, that is epic. Well, that is it, folks. 16%, 15 miles remaining. Brilliant, completely different car. Totally different, like zero stress at all, traveling that 115 miles. It was like, just a piece of cake, did that rapid charge. No problem, piece of cake. So, that's really, really good. So cost 5k to put her back um, and I'll, yeah, I'll probably do another video at some point with just, I suppose, Amy talking about how much difference she finds it. I mean, basically, it's going to have miles more than we actually even need. We've been doing perfectly fine for 86,000 miles with what we already had to then jump that up to double the amount of range, basically, um, from what we've been used to for the last two years, anyway. Um, more than enough. So, it's good news. Straightforward driving. Just been spot on. So, there we go. Issue resolved. Sorted. Done. Hopefully now good for a long period of time. So, and as always, I'll report back. This is a video diary over the last 10 years so far of EV ownership. And so, yeah. Very good. See you guys on the next one.